Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. 18 of 22 persons of interest in Kingston West now in custody. Following weeks of gang conflict within the Denham Town Police District, 18 of 22 persons who were listed as persons of interest have turned themselves over to the Kingston Western Police. The disclosure was made by Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson on Thursday during a Crime Monitoring and Oversight Committee CMOC virtual press conference. The names of those in police custody were not released by Anderson. We've had 18 of them come into the police, including one wanted person who we have charged, he stated, while not identifying the individual who was charged. The commissioner explained that those in custody will be questioned as the police continue to work on cases within the division. Additionally, he shared that four other men are being sought in relation to the violence in the division. On February 4th, the police issued a statement urging 22 individuals to turn themselves in to the Denham Town Police by 6 p.m. the following day. The persons were linked to gang conflict within the Denham Town Police District which had allegedly extended to several other communities in the police division. Three men who were said to be associated with the Tivoli Young Generation Gang were listed as being wanted in a separate release. They were also urged to turn themselves over to the Denham Town Police by Friday, February 5th. 662 healthcare workers being trained to administer COVID vaccines. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is training 662 healthcare workers across the country to administer the COVID-19 vaccines in anticipation of the arrival of the first shipment, which is expected on the island shortly. Speaking at the weekly COVID-19 online press conference on Thursday evening, Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton said the vaccines will be administered along the interim guidelines outlined by the World Health Organization, WHO, which were established by the body's strategic group of experts and immunization at a meeting on February 8. Tufton said the majority of the healthcare workers being trained are public health nurses who will be ready to carry out the process by the time the vaccines arrive in Jamaica. The Southeast Regional Health Authority which covers Kingston, St. Andrew, St. Catherine, and St. Thomas, has the majority of the individuals who are being trained, with 232, and is followed by Southern Region Health Authority, with 170 individuals from Clarendon, Manchester, and St. Elizabeth. Within the Northern East Regional Health Authority, which covers Portland, St. Mary, and St. Anne, 120 persons are being trained, while in the Western Regional Health Authority, comprising of Trelawney, St. James, Westmoreland, and Hanover, 140 individuals are preparing to administer the vaccines. Our number one priority, of course, remains the safety of our people, and the government, through the ministry, will continue to seek out all avenues to the best health outcome, to the best medicine, said Tufton. He added that the Ministry of Health and Wellness is working closely with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade to ensure that the island receive vaccines through the COVAX facility, which negotiation also taking place outside that arrangement. He said a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, is expected to be signed with the private sector, which also wants to play a role by helping the government to secure vaccines. But at the end of it all, selection of a vaccine will follow a protocol, and I want to reassure the public that we will not embrace or endorse any vaccine that falls outside of the protocols of going through the expert assessment that the WHO subjects a vaccine to before certifying it as safe. There are many offers out there, but we believe that this approach has worked in the past, and frankly speaking, we have our own experts here who will not breach that protocol. So the public can feel safe when we indeed embrace, endorse, and make available a vaccine to the population. And it is not long from now that we believe that a vaccine will be available 
to the populace, said Tufton. Silverstone Basic School prepares for face-to-face -face learning. It has almost been a year since the COVID-19 pandemic hit Jamaican shores and scores of schools are still trying to establish a new normal. The administration of the Portmore Bay Silverstone Basic School is among educators now navigating challenges in the transition to virtual education plus a lack of resources to resume physical teaching. Catering to 270 students between the ages of 2 and 5 years old, it was important that the school acquired the necessary infrastructure to ensure no child is left behind. There were several issues we had to deal with, which included enrollment, internet access, suitable equipment for remote teaching and learning, repacking lessons for virtual delivery and supervisory support for the children at home. Because there are such small children, they require a lot of daily interaction and guidance from our teachers because their attention span is short, said Asanya Dona, principal of Silverstone Basic School. Despite these issues, the teachers found creative ways to keep their students engaged and continue to deliver an exemplary teaching experience under the guidance of the Early Childhood Commission with the guidelines of the Jolly Phonics curriculum. It's a method that has distinguished them in their community, giving the school a reputation for grooming students who are sought after by the preferred primary schools in Portmore. The school's efforts were boosted by a 500000 price recently secured in the Desnot and Geddes D&G Foundation 545 promotion. The initiative, powered by Malta, saw the foundation donating $2.5 million shared among five schools across the island. Silverstone's prize money will go towards a school improvement project. Donna said, this money will be very useful because without it, the resumption of face-to-face -face classes would not be possible. It will allow for the provision of school furniture to accommodate face-to-face -face learning while abiding by government's health and safety protocols. We will be able to purchase additional desks and install table divisors between each one. We will also be able to do daily temperature checks, install sanitation stations, and limit movement of students and teachers. We want to do everything in our power to keep our children and teachers safe. Diane Ashton Simit, board member of the DNG Foundation, noted that the organization strives to impact lives and enrich communities, and so she was happy to know that their donation significantly contributed to the school's development. Youth development is one of the values we champion at the D&G Foundation, and so we are always grateful for the opportunity to support schools in big ways. As we continue to make the adjustment of living in a pandemic, we must make an extra effort to support the school community as the changes they have to make require resources. The health and safety of the staff and children are top priority as they resume learning and teaching in a face-to-face -face environment, so we are happy to play our role in improving their facilities, said Ashton Simit. Other beneficiaries of the promotion were Denby High School, Westwood High School, the Queen's School, and Merle Grove High School, who had varying projects which include improving their digital infrastructure to better facilitate online learning and the distribution of care packages to members of the school community. Five more COVID deaths, 290 new cases. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is reporting that Jamaica recorded five more COVID-19 deaths on Thursday. The deceased all from Kingston and St. Andrew are a 60-year-old female a 40-year-old male, an 80-year-old female, a 52-year-old female, and an 82-year-old female. The casualties bring the overall coronavirus death toll in Jamaica to 368. There were, however, two other deaths involving COVID-19 patients that are under investigation and another classified as coincidental. In the meantime, the country recorded 219 new corona cases from 1,497 samples and 48 recoveries on the day. 
the 290 newly confirmed COVID-19 cases bring the total number of cases on record for the island to 18,527, while the 48 recoveries mean that 12,504 persons have now recovered from the virus in Jamaica. Of the newly confirmed cases, 152 are males and 137 are female, while the gender involved in one case is awaiting confirmation. Ages range from 21 days to 102 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 64, St. Catherine 44, St. James 42, Trelawney 22, Hanover 20, St. Thomas 18, Manchester 17, Clarendon 16, St. Mary 14, St. Anne 10, St. Elizabeth 10, Portland 8, and Westmoreland 5. There are 30 moderately ill patients and 22 critically ill patients among the 5,465 active cases now under observation in Jamaica. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.